I love it when the sun sets later and the days get longer. I get more time to be outdoors and just live a little more. But all this summer activity sometimes means I have even less time to cook and focus on eating foods I know are good for me. That's why I've switched up my game with Daily Harvest. It's honestly the best self-care routine I've ever had. Daily Harvest delivers delicious harvest bowls, flatbreads, smoothies, and more, all built on organic fruits and vegetables right to your door. My favorite is the broccoli and cheese harvest bowl. Daily Harvest takes literally minutes to prepare and never uses preservatives, added sugar, or artificial anything. And that goes for everything. Get more time to do you and take care of yourself this summer. Go to dailyharvest.com and enter code RESPECTABLE to get $25 off your first box. That's code RESPECTABLE for $25 off your first box at dailyharvest.com. Dailyharvest.com. Now streaming exclusively on BET+. Plus. All the Queen's Men. From Tyler Perry Studios and show creator Christian Keyes comes the hottest new original series on BET+. Based on Christian's best-selling novel, Ladies' Night, All the Queen's Men stars Eva Marcel as Marilyn Madame DeVille, a ruthless male exotic dance club owner. Madame protects her empire at any cost, and betrayal or murder are not off the table. Heavy is the head that wears Madam's crown. Full of explosive drama and seductive showmanship. From Madam's Men, the full season of this steamy new series, All the Queen's Men, is now streaming only on BET+. Expect lots of skin, lots of sin, and plenty of plot twists all season long. Want BET+. It's the premium streaming service that lets you stream black culture anytime, anywhere, ad-free. Haven't subscribed yet? Visit BET.plus to sign up and learn more. Feeling your best starts with what you eat. Sakara gives you the ability to not just eat healthy, but truly enjoy it with chef-crafted plant-rich meals that build a foundation for radiant health. Sakara is a nutrition company that focuses on overall wellness, starting with what you eat. Their organic, ready-to-eat meals are made with powerful plant-based ingredients and are designed to boost your energy, improve your digestion, and get your skin glowing. What I love most about Sakara is you get nutritious dishes that nourish your body without ever sacrificing the taste. And right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash ratchet or enter code ratchet at checkout. That's sakara, S-A-K-A-R-A dot com slash ratchet to get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash ratchet. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who don't identify as either, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable with Demetria L. Lucas. Uh, My heart is broken today for many reasons, the most important of which is my city. I don't live in New York anymore, but I was there for 17 years, and I still consider myself a New Yorker. Although my mindset is shifting rapidly which I only recognized when I was back in New York. But that's not the point. My heart breaks because my city was underwater. Like the images coming out of New York, the stories coming out of New York of like friends who were like family being trapped in their cars or abandoned on the side of streets and having to rely on strangers, spending the night in strangers' homes because they couldn't make it to their own, seeing the the videos of, of their homes being flooded out, the refrigerator, the sofa, everything is just floating around in water that who got, only God knows what's in it. The subway stations flooded, the water pouring like, you know, like Niagara Falls. And sorry to be cliche, but I don't know another or a better simile to describe what I saw. Like it was horrifying. 
shout out to New York and, and everyone who was affected by the storm and the other part in other parts of the East Coast. Jersey got hit really bad, too. And then obviously down south and in Louisiana, New Orleans, like I was reading, like the power was off like citywide in New Orleans, but it didn't flood the same way it did like Katrina. Um, thank God. Global warming is a bitch. Like, I don't know how anyone can still deny global warming at this point. I guess when it was happening other places and we were seeing glaciers melt and starving polar bears, people just thought like, oh, that's them over there. Like, but no, now it's come to our front door, like the eastern seaboard. But yeah, my prayers are with everyone who is affected by the storm. I can't imagine living through it. I was reading um, on Curbed. I think there was a segment, it was like stories of, of 10 New Yorkers who survived the storm. It was literally like the, the morning after that big storm on Wednesday. They were describing just like trying to get home and, you know, how long it took and how terrified everyone was or, you know, water rushing into uh, your apartment. I guess a tsunami might be the right word. Um, avalanche usually applies to snow, but a whole bunch of water came barreling you know, into the house out of nowhere. The property damage, as much as it sucks, is expensive. It's as inconvenient as it is to replace those things. You know, property can be replaced. People cannot. You survived. Your loved ones survived. That's something to be thankful for. The rest of it is, you know, very annoying and a pain in the ass. But stuff, most of it, can be replaced. One thing I was thinking about, like, when I saw these these images of, you know, in people's homes that were just like, you know, people were walking around in like waist deep water. Like I was like, oh my God. But I always think about the baby pictures, the wedding photos. I don't know if your family is like mine, but we have like a whole storage unit that has nothing but photos. Like when my grandparents passed away and on my mom's side, they collected a lot of photos. They had a, um, not an armoire, but I guess a, a dresser. It was one of the, those old school dressers and it had really deep drawers. And there were two of them and they were just loaded with pictures. I always valued that because I could, you know, see pictures of my grandmother as a much younger woman. My grandmother was like in her 60s, you know, when I was born. I would go through the pictures in the drawer when I would stay at at their house for the summer. And they're like pictures of my grandmother, like riding a camel in, I think, Jerusalem. I always value like images like that. I mean, you can tell somebody about it, but just to just to see the, the pictures and capture that moment in time, like really mean something means something a little more, at least for me. So when I see the videos and hear the stories of people who, you know, their houses are flooded, I'm like, you can replace the ironing board. You can replace the refrigerator. God, I hope you had rental insurance. And that they had rental insurance for flooding. Because just, I think, your baseline rental insurance, that, that happened with New Orleans and Houston as well. They were like, the insurance doesn't cover flooding. So, like, wait, what? Which, you know... Nobody in New York, I mean, unless you're like, you know, maybe if you live near the beach, if you're like along the coast of the islands, essentially, you would think you might flood if there was a big storm. But like, I don't know, the middle of Manhattan, the subway, nobody expects that shit to happen. And yet it did. Badly. I also realized that I still have remnants of my abusive relationship with the city of New York. I've always said that that relationship was dysfunctional. Like, New York is an antagonistic place like it is just it's an uphill battle every single day like it's just it's nothing but adversity but I still think it's one of the best cities in the world I was watching these horrible videos of New York just you know battering its people people sleeping in subway stations that are flooded they can't get home all the train lines are suspended Buses aren't running. Ubers and Lyfts are charging four times as much to get home. And the first thing I wanted to do was be in New York. I just wanted to be there. Like, even in the midst of the chaos, the confusion, the craziness, the the, the, the horror, all of it. Like, I wanted to be in New York. I, I didn't have that, like, oh, well, at least I'm in L.A. And, like, that doesn't happen here. Which is always weird to me when, like, people in L.A. say stuff like that about, like, the East Coast. Well, like, well, that doesn't happen over here. Like, we have sunny days. Like, The ground moves, y'all. The ground moves on a regular basis. And it hasn't happened in a while, which kind of has me shook. Because I was like, so the South is getting battered. The East is getting battered. And we just going to skate through? If I know life like I think I know life. I've been doing it for 42 years. I'm like, something about to happen in L.A. We already have fires in California. I think L.A. is fire-free for the moment. And we haven't even had like a little earthquake in a while. Not that I felt. 
But just the idea that, like, I know what an earthquake feels like and can identify it because I'm so accustomed to the feeling of the ground moving. It's some scary shit. I hate it when L.A. people do that. Clearly, I don't feel like I'm a part of L.A. I feel like I live in L.A., but I don't feel like I'm a part of L.A. in the way that I still feel about New York. I feel so bad for New York right now. And last night was looking at tickets to go home. I was going to say that was a Freudian slip, but it's just what I think. But I was looking at tickets last night to go to New York. I mean, not this week and not next week, but sometime in September. (sighs) My poor city. I know they'll recover. They've recovered from many other things, things that were worse than this. Even though people did die, the death toll is not um, is not super high, which is thankful. Oh, in less important news, but news nonetheless, I was supposed to get my braces off yesterday, Thursday. I was supposed to get my braces off and I was really excited about it. Like I had it written on my calendar. I put it on the calendar like I have a physical calendar that's um, that's posted like in my quote unquote office slash warehouse space. Um, i.e. my walk-in closet that I converted into warehouse space for, for Ratchet and Respectable merch. Also in my phone, I had like two alerts to make sure I didn't miss the appointment. Like I was very excited. And then I got to the orthodontist and the assistant was like, oh, what color do you want for your braces today? And I was like, no, 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 no. My braces are coming off today. And my ortho was like, did I tell you that? And I was like, yes. And she said, I thought we said we talk about it. And I was like, oh, oh. Technically accurate, but no, like you said, everything like, you know, it's above me now. We're going to do our best. Like it seemed like, you know, 70% they're coming off. And she's like, let's take a look. She gets all up in my mouth. And so she was like, looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Oh, I said, what is What is ooh? What does ooh mean? And so she was like, well, you have an excessive plaque buildup behind your front teeth. And if I put your retainer on, then it's going to cover that placky space. And so you're going to basically have permanent plaque on your teeth, which for obvious reasons is not healthy for your teeth. So we're going to have to schedule a teeth cleaning before we can take your braces off to, and then put your retainer on, unless you want the retainer that comes in and out. And I was like, absolutely not. Because I know me, like the last time I had braces, I had the retainer that you could take in and out and you see how that ended up. So I was like, no, I specifically asked for a permanent retainer. And so she was like, well, then we can't do a permanent retainer today. And I was like, but wait, we can't clean my teeth today. And she was like, no, we can't, we can't fit you in. So I was like, well, when's the next time? Like, can I come next week? And she was like, no, unfortunately she was real sweet about it. She's actually really nice. And I like my orthodontist. I'm just, you know, pissy about my braces right now. And I'm not really, I'm not even disappointed. She told me nine months when she put the braces on my teeth and I had prepared for a year. So we're only technically a month over at this point. I got them last December. So I'll live with it. But I did want my braces off. I was out with my friend yesterday and I really wanted to like, you know, smile all up in his face with all 32 of my teeth without my braces on. I mean, I smiled in his face with all 32 of my teeth anyway, but I had braces. You know, it kind of ruins the effect. He's never said a word about them, good or bad, but still. Oh, and then also I found out yesterday that even if they'd taken my braces, the bottom row off and put my permanent retainer in, I still would have had my top row of braces for another month. And I was like, that just would have been weird with like, Like the bottom row, you can hide. The top row, you can see all the time. So I was like, eh, whatever. So next month, I have a teeth cleaning. And then two days later, I get my braces off. We're reserving prayers for like the big, big things, right? To send out hope that Demetria actually gets her braces off next month. Oh, and apparently a bunch of y'all have been showing up to like my orthodontist. Like I gave her a shout out on Instagram, I guess. Um... And when I got there yesterday, there was a woman who was leaving and she was like, oh my God, I started coming here because of you. I saw it on your Instagram. And I was like, are you having a happy experience? Do you have happy teeth? And she was like, yeah, I just got braces. I was like, oh, it's a lot of folks getting their teeth right. It's a good investment. But thank you for supporting my orthodontist, the Smile Studio in Inglewood. They are a black owned business, a black woman owned business to be specific. But the receptionist at the desk, she was like, girl. We had to look up, like, what do you do? Because so many people were coming in here. I and mean, like, Demetria recommended me. And we were like, who? They were like, oh, the girl with the big blonde hair who has, like, big black hair. They were like, yeah. <laughs> they were playing Usher in the waiting room yesterday. And the price is right when I was getting my teeth done. It's usually, like, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air or, like, A Different World, Living Single, Tia and Tamara. That's how many times I've been there. But I love that place. I'm actually going to be a little sad to get my braces off. I actually like 
going to the orthodontist. I'll still be getting my teeth cleaned there, though. So I'll see them every six months, faithfully. Because apparently I don't know how to brush my teeth. And if I did, I could not have braces today. Ah, I did it to myself. Before you leave the house, you do the checklist for your phone, keys, and wallet. It's time to add one more thing before you walk out the door. Birdie is the newest essential addition to your routine. Birdie is a personal safety alarm designed to be easy to carry and simple to use. When you activate your birdie with a quick pull, the alarm will emit a loud 130 decibel siren and flashing strobe light to help deter an attack. What I love most about birdie is unlike pepper spray and other deterrents, birdie is no danger to you. Feel confident to use it without the worry. Also, Birdie goes wherever you do. The alarm comes in multiple colors and has a brass keychain, so you can attach it to your keys or bag. Over 300,000 Birdie alarms have been sold, and they have thousands of five-star reviews. Join the flock today for a safer tomorrow. Right now, She's Birdie is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase when you go to she'sbirdie.com slash ratchet. Go to She's Birdie, spelled S-H-E-S-B-I-R-D-I-E dot com slash ratchet for 15% off your first purchase. That's She's Birdie dot com slash ratchet. I love it when the sun sets later and the days get longer. I get more time to be outdoors and just live a little more. But all this summer activity sometimes means I have even less time to cook and focus on eating foods I know are good for me. That's why I've switched up my game with Daily Harvest. It's honestly the best self-care routine I've ever had. Daily Harvest delivers delicious harvest bowls, flatbreads, smoothies, and more, all built on organic fruits and vegetables right to your door. My favorite is the broccoli and cheese harvest bowl. Daily Harvest takes literally minutes to prepare and never uses preservatives, added sugar, or artificial anything. And that goes for everything. My personal summer favorite is Daily Harvest Scoops, their plant-based ice cream. Scoops is the perfect sweet treat. Plus, it's gluten and dairy-free. Daily Harvest is delicious food, all built on whole organic fruits and vegetables that conveniently stay fresh in your freezer. So it's ready when you are. It's really the whole package. Get more time to do you and take care of yourself this summer. Go to dailyharvest.com and enter code RESPECTABLE to get $25 off your first box. That's code RESPECTABLE for $25 off your first box at dailyharvest.com. Dailyharvest.com. In other news, do we have good black news this week? I, I didn't find much. I did see that OnlyFans reversed its stance on suspending accounts that had pornography, which I thought was good. There was an especially loud outcry from sex workers who used the platform, who popularized the platform. Because again, I didn't know there was other content on OnlyFans other than sex workers. They were supposed to ban the sexually explicit content on October 1st. And this happened last week. I didn't get a chance to cover it. But they tweeted, quote, thank you to everyone for making your voices heard. We have secured assurances necessary to support our diverse creator community and have suspended the planned October 1st policy change. Only fan stands for inclusion, and we will continue to provide a home for all creators. I think they underestimated the current climate on sex work, which everybody doesn't approve of, obviously, but a lot of people do. I think they might have underestimated the joy that, that the sexual content on their site brings to others. So if you're enjoying OnlyFans, if you have subscriptions, to very sexual, maybe pornographic content. You can continue to enjoy it in peace for now. I did notice that in their, in their commentary, they said that they suspended the planned October 1st policy change. That doesn't mean there won't be one coming down the line, but for October 1st, they're safe. So continue to, you know, enjoy your explicit content 
in peace. I read that Miss Tina is very upset with us. Us being people who pointed out that Beyonce is wearing a blood diamond in the Tiffany ad. She went into the comments section of the Grio, which I was like, that's a little beneath you, Miss Tina. And not nothing against the Grio. I used to write for the Grio. I love the Grio. But Miss Tina was in the, the comments section of the Grio telling folks off, talking about her daughter. Many people are very upset, and I think rightfully so, about the, uh, the Tiffany diamond and its, its colonial origins. And many people pointed out that, you know, doing this Tiffany's campaign and wearing a blood diamond while doing so doesn't really, you know, mesh with the African-influenced art that Beyonce has been putting out for the last couple years, which I was like, fair critique. That's a fair critique. Miss Tina didn't think so. She got into the Griot's Instagram comments. And she said, and a lot of it's misspelled too. And I was like, Miss Tina was big mad today. She said, how many of you socially conscious activists own diamonds? I thought so. Well, guess what? Did you try to go and check and see where the diamond came from? Probably not. Actually, most diamonds that are sold now, they actually do like tell you where the diamond comes from. Like it's a really big thing not to sell conflict diamonds. And could they be lying? Absolutely, yes. But yes, people do actually check to see where their diamonds come from. Like that's, that's a thing, Miss Tina. So she says, so when you guys get engaged, you won't have a diamond. You're going to put it on a sterling silver band and you better check out where it came from and the origin of where it came from and why you add it, add instead of add, check out the calls for the leather that you weird, not wear, because they make it come from another country to to band and not buy diamonds, right? Because you are righteous. Huh? But I was like, Mama, I know you want to defend your girl. I know you do. I know you do. This is a misstep for her. I'm not saying ban Beyonce. I'm not saying torture Beyonce. I'm not saying cancel Beyonce. You can acknowledge when you like fuck up. It's okay. This wasn't all the way thought, thought through. I said last time we talked about this diamond, like the idea of like being the first black woman to wear this diamond that has been in existence for, I don't know, like a hundred and what, 50 years. It's like, that doesn't impress me. Tell me it happened in the sixties. I'm impressed in 2021. The first black woman to wear it? What, like 50 some odd years after Audrey Hepburn? Forgive me. I'm I'm not impressed by that. I also think that perhaps this isn't the argument that you want to make. Like, because essentially what she's saying is like, everyone wears blood diamonds. So like, why can't Beyonce wear one? And I'm like, maybe the argument should be like, we all should not be wearing blood diamonds. And we should take the time to investigate where our diamonds come from. Especially if we're going to put them front and center in, you know, a national, perhaps international marketing campaign. Someone should have thought about that. It happens. But I think this is one that, you know, Miss Tina should probably just take the L on. And I would love it, actually, if Beyonce, you know, released a statement of some sort saying that, you know, I was unaware and obviously I don't support and... I think it would be a, a, a nice touch, per se. I was seeing something the other day. I want to say it was Most Deaf. What is his new name? He's had this new name for like over 10 years. Yassine Bey. But he was supposed to be in, I want to say it was a Miles Davis movie. Or was it Thelonious Monk? Hold on. He was supposed to be starring in a Thelonious Monk biopic and after it was announced that he was going to be in the film the family came out and said that they didn't approve of the film I think they said nobody had consulted them they were really upset about it most deaf he'd already signed on to the film he came out he made a video that he posted on Instagram and he was like not even like he said flatly Quote, let me be clear, if the Monk estate is not happy with it, if Mr. Monk III is not happy with it, then neither am I. I was given every indication by the production company that the family was on board. It was one of my primary questions, just as important as the music, if not more important, that the family supported the project. I took them at their word, and clearly that wasn't the case. I think Beyonce 
could do something of the same sort without, you know, necessarily throwing Tiffany under the bus. But I think it wouldn't be unheard of to say, I did this thing and I wasn't aware. And for obvious reasons, I just want you to know that I don't condone quote and unquote blood diamonds. That said, I would also guess, because I have it in all of my contracts, you know, obviously I'm nowhere near like a Beyonce superstar level, but like I can't disparage any of the places that I write for, at least for the run of the campaign for sure. And probably for like 12 months afterward, I'm not allowed to say anything remotely disparaging. So like, say I I promote a TV show, which sometimes I think people ask me to do stuff specifically. So I can't write my honest review about it. But if they ask me to promote a TV show, I can't promote the show and get a check for it and then turn around and like disparage the show in any way. Maybe she'd like to say something. Maybe she can't. I don't know. But I would like it if she did. I don't know. I was reading this other article the other day. And I'm calling it an article might be a lot. It's more like a blog post. And the person was writing how they think that Beyonce is using Mama Tina's account as a way to, you know, clap back or rant on social media. Because, you know, Beyonce, like, doesn't really talk. Like, she'll post a bunch of pictures. But the caption is rarely more than a sentence, if that. She doesn't do a lot of interviews. She doesn't really speak a lot. She just does the work and lets the work speak for her, speak for itself. So maybe in an upcoming album, which I'm convinced one is coming sooner than later, maybe she'll address her thoughts via song, make it lucrative. But the thing I was reading was like, yo, she's using Mama Tina's account to vent her perspective online when she's sick of us. And I was like, that's, that's hilarious, actually. I was like, I wish she had used Mama Tina's account to be like, you know, obviously, you know, Beyonce doesn't support blood diamonds. Like, that's ridiculous. And I wish you'd stop saying so. Because people do quote her mother like she's a publicist. I'm just saying. I've been using CBD for a while now. I have a lot of anxiety and it really helps soothe it. And I have a new favorite CBD company, Onyx and Rose. They offer the highest quality CBD products on the market. Even the packaging is beautiful and inviting. I love using them. Onyx and Rose's skincare line is so thoughtfully crafted. I feel so much more confident in my skincare since I started using their products. And I love how Onyx and Rose really cares about their customers' wellness journeys. I love that in a company. From their bath bombs to their facial moisturizers, Everything is so relaxing and luxurious. I also love that Onyx and Rose is committed to transparency and they wanted to create CBD products that you'll get joy out of using in your daily routine. They have everything from CBD oil and sleep gummies to an amazing skincare line. Plus, all of their products are non-psychoactive and allow you to experience the therapeutic benefits of CBD. I want you to make Onyx and Rose a part of your daily routine. You'll love it. I have an amazing deal to get you started. 20% off your first purchase. Just go to my special URL, onyxandrose.com slash ratchet and use promo code ratchet. Don't wait. You won't get 20% off anywhere else. Use promo code RATCHET only at O-N-Y-X and Rose.com slash RATCHET. Feeling your best starts with what you eat. Sakara gives you the ability to not just eat healthy, but truly enjoy it with chef-crafted plant-rich meals that build a foundation for radiant health. Sakara is a nutrition company that focuses on overall wellness, starting with what you eat. Their organic ready-to-eat meals are made with powerful plant-based ingredients and are designed to boost your energy, improve your digestion, and get your skin glowing. The menu of chef-crafted ready-to-eat breakfast, lunch, and dinners changes weekly, so you'll never get bored. And it's delivered fresh to your door anywhere in the U.S. Along with delicious plant-rich meals, Sakara also offers daily wellness essentials like supplements and herbal teas to support your nutrition. Experience the transformative power of plants with their best-selling Metabolism Super Powder. Made with organic raw cocoa, it works to boost energy, eliminate bloating, minimize sugar cravings, and reduce fatigue. 
What I love most about Saqqara is you get nutritious dishes that nourish your body without ever sacrificing the taste. And right now, Saqqara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to Saqqara.com slash ratchet or enter code ratchet at checkout. That's Saqqara, S-A-K-A-R-A dot com slash ratchet to get 20% off your first order. Saqqara.com slash ratchet. What else is going on? Texas, i.e. Gilead. I had very naively thought once Trump was out of office that we would go back in the other direction from Gilead because we were very much heading into insanity, the oppression of women, anybody of color, LGBTQIA+, everybody who wasn't a cishet white man essentially, with money, because they don't give a fuck about poor white men, it's just white men, white men with money. I thought we, were, we would go back in the other direction. But this Texas shit, so in addition to banning abortion after six weeks, a point that most women may or may not know that they are pregnant, like say it takes a month for you to like realize like, oh shit, like my period didn't come this month. You've only got like a couple weeks before you, you know, you have to make a decision about what you're going to do. That's a hard decision. Like if you believe life begins at conception, which I don't, but okay. But if you do believe that, then you're asking people to make a life or death decision in two weeks. Yikes. I would say the other part of that is if you have the money and you have the resources or time off ability or transportation to go and have an abortion, then like, okay, like that, it could work for you. But I don't know. I've read so many stories, especially during the pandemic, about how like the average person doesn't even have like four hundred dollars in their savings account. I've read somewhere that like the average black woman only has five dollars in savings. If you find out you're pregnant and you don't want to and you don't want to have the kid, you want to have an abortion. I don't know how much how, how much is the price of an abortion like these days? Three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred. Let me look this up. Oh my God, I had no idea the cost of an abortion was this high. Jesus Christ. The cost of an abortion, this is just for Texas. I'm reading from the ACLU Texas. I'm reading from ACLUTX.com. So the ACLU in Texas. The cost of an abortion in the first trimester is between 300 and 800 for a medication abortion and between 300 and 1500 for a procedure abortion. Hospitals generally charge more. And obviously abortion is not covered by health insurance um, unless, I didn't even know you could do this, unless you purchase separate abortion insurance. And as of December 1st, 2017, Texas law forbade insurers from covering abortion as part of your overall health insurance plan. Unless you need an abortion to save you from death or serious physical injury. Wow. This new Texas law... It's, I call Texas lawmakers the Taliban for a reason because it sounds like it's crazy shit. Like what they're trying to do to women over in Afghanistan. And I think I talked about this, how like America looks at other countries and we'd be like, oh my God, how could they treat their women that way? And I'm like, wait, we live in America. This new law in Texas, you can't have an abortion after six weeks, which is already crazy. And here's where it gets like absolutely batshit. The law allows individuals to bring civil lawsuits against abortion providers or anyone else found to aid or abet illegal abortions. So if you think that your neighbor might have had an abortion after six weeks, you can bring a lawsuit against them. So it's like encouraging the people of Texas to be on like pregnancy watch. Oh, you're pregnant. Like where's, where's your baby? Where's your bump? Like, did you have an abortion? That's crazy. And then also like what happens in the case of like women who have like miscarriages, like, okay, she was pregnant. She said she was pregnant, but like now she's not pregnant. Like, did she have an abortion? This is a conversation that should be between a woman and her doctor 
no one else. Like the idea that like neighbors or randoms, people who work at grocery stores, like just anybody, because literally it's like anybody to, to, to bring a civil lawsuit against someone because they think that they've had an abortion or they think an abortion provider has assisted And I'm being very generous by saying abortion provider. I'm thinking about clinics or doctors or a safe measure of some sort. But the result, I think, of what's happening in Texas is going to be about what happened before Roe v. Wade, is which you have women going to quote and unquote back alley abortions because one, they're cheap. But I think with women without just the option of time, because that makes a huge difference, they're going to start doing crazy shit trying to become unpregnant for whatever reasons they do. I don't think I need to list reasons that women don't want to, that women might not want to have a kid because she doesn't is a sufficient reason to me. It's the, the physical, emotional, financial rest of your life decision that I totally get why somebody wouldn't want to make. I'm just, I'm really scared for, for the women of Texas and For the women of other places, because, you know, Texas enacts this law, which everyone's like, this is some bullshit. We're going to take it to the Supreme Court and clearly they're going to overturn it. Clearly they're going to hear this case and be like, this is some bullshit because Roe v. Wade exists. But then this case goes to the Supreme Court. Trump put all those like loony bins on there, plus Clarence Thomas. They were like, you know what? We're not going to we're not even going to hear this case. We're going to let the decision in Texas stand. And I feel like some of these other loony bin southern states like Florida, Florida's going to try this shit next, guaranteed. Maybe Mississippi, maybe Georgia, maybe Alabama. Alabama seems to be pretty quiet on a lot of these things. Alabama doesn't make a lot of noise, but definitely Florida. Texas and Florida are lockstep in batshit behavior. So it's a matter of time before Florida tries to enact this shit. I just, I'm scared. This is a huge step backwards. I mean, nothing Texas does should surprise me at this point. Like they're running around like COVID doesn't exist despite their hospitals being overwhelmed. Texans might be all right. Texas government, I mean, but they are elected by the Texans. The majority of Texans, I ain't going to say all, the majority of Texans who keep like electing these loony bin mofos, what y'all doing? Oh, one thing we didn't talk about, I was about to wrap it up. Oh, no, I wasn't either. Do I want to talk about this B. Slade situation? I don't know how to pronounce this man's name. And y'all talk about me so bad for not being able to pronounce names. I saw this woman go on this like horrific rant about like, it's so disrespectful. She has no respect. And it's just like, no, I'm I'm really bad at, at pronouncing things that I haven't heard. The time it would take to go and look up everybody's name when I like mention them offhand on the podcast because the people whose names I actually like do get right, I do go on YouTube and I look for, you know, to hear how other people pronounce their name and try to get it right. I know people think I don't, but I do. I'm really just that fucking horrible at it. But I have asides when I speak sometimes. And I, I don't know, the idea of like going back into my podcast when I'm editing and looking up every single name and see if it's like pronounced correctly. Y'all complain this shit is late now. It'll be another two hours later. B. Slade. Let's go with that. He had another name like earlier in his career. Tone. It's, pre- it's spelled T-O-N-E-X, but I know it's not Tone X. Well, I think it's Tone. I did not know who he was. I remember when he was in gospel, very vaguely, I was dating this guy and his father listened to a lot of gospel. And I remember his father talking about this artist. And that's the only time I've ever heard his name. I can't name you a song. I couldn't tell you what he looked like. I knew nothing about him um, until Kanye West released his latest album. I'm trying to figure out how to describe this. There's this gospel artist, uh, Brie Babineau, and she is featured. Her voice is included on the Kanye album. I don't really follow gospel artists like that. Like I listen to a lot of gospel music, but I like the old school stuff. I don't really know like a lot of the new artists, but Brie Babineau recorded a song by Tone, who is now known as B. Slade. There's a video of her singing this cover of the song. And Kanye used an ad lib or a riff that she did during that cover on his new album. So the album comes out 
everyone hits her up and was like, girl, you're on the Kanye album. And so she was like, I wish someone had told me and I wish someone had paid me and I wish someone had credited me. B. Slade, who originally wrote the song that Brie performed, he came out and was like, well, they contacted me for clearance for the song because it's my song and I wrote it. It's my song. So I was trying to figure out like the legality of all of that because I was like, okay, I totally get why the writer of the song, the creator of the song would have to do the clearance and would get a check. But I was like, but you're using this woman's voice and she doesn't get anything. She doesn't get a check too. I asked on one of my social pages and like a bunch of lawyers chimed in and many of them explained it to me. And so I'm not going to regurgitate it. I was tagged in a video this morning. Her full name is not here, but she's an IP attorney. She's a black woman. And on Instagram, she does a bunch of videos explaining the legality of like very various issues that might come up in pop culture. So she did a video explaining this Kanye B. Slade, Brie Babineau situation. And you can go to her page. It's at K-I-M-R-A-E-S-Q. And she has a four minute video that's just breaking down this whole situation and how Kanye wasn't legally wrong or Kanye's team. In short, because Brie put this recording out into the public domain, it's kind of for public use. And some states protect it and other states don't. And if she is based in Louisiana, which the lawyer believes that she is, they don't have protections for artists in this manner. New York has it. California has it. I think she said Florida has it. That's where a lot of artists tend to to gather. But Louisiana doesn't have it. She was like, honestly, like what Kanye is, is really like in violation here, like legally nothing. He could have given her credit. He could have had her come in and do a collaboration, but he's not legally wrong for not notifying her or not crediting her. And I was like, damn. I think sometimes a lot of people forget that the entertainment business is very much a business. And often we only think about the, the artists and the creatives that are up front. Everybody, especially the labels, have like a team of lawyers to make sure that the business is protected. And every once in a while, something will slip through. Like I was reading, maybe not so long ago, about how like Diddy never cleared the sting sample that he used for... I'll be missing you. The melody of Sting's Every Breath You Take was used by Diddy for his tribute to Biggie. They do the song. They never clear it with Sting. I don't know if they didn't realize it was going to be a massive hit or what, but they never even asked him permission. The song goes on to sell 7 million copies. It won a Grammy for Best Rap Performance or Duo. And Sting got paid all of it because he owns the copyright. He did this interview. He was like, yeah, I make like $750,000 every year just in royalties off that song. But that's what happens when you don't handle your business on the back end. And Sting actually said, he was like, if he called and asked me, like I probably would have given it to him for like 25%. Like he never would have thought that it would have gone on to be as successful as it was because nobody called me and asked me, well then... I'll take it all. Thank you very much. I also read that like Brie, who did the song, I mean, she did the song, she recorded it, she uploaded it, paying homage to um, a song that she really liked. What I read was that video made her really popular and then she released a single of that song. And B. Slade was like, she never called me to clear either. Which I was like, oh, that's, oh. Cause I was feeling real bad for baby girl. And then that came out and I was like, well, you know, I want baby girl to get her hustle. I want her to have all her success. She's amazingly talented. She has a hell of a voice. But I was like, you gotta get that business in short up, sweetheart. She's rightfully upset. Like my voice is being used and by this major artist on this major album that's going to hit number one. And I don't even get credit. You didn't. Which is wrong. I think at the very least, like, 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 like the lawyer said, like Kimber, the lawyer said, she was like, you know, manners, decent manners. He should have said, thank you. He should have given her a credit on the album. That's a good look for her. I think a check is a better look, but 
Kanye also has a habit of like stiffing his his gospel artists. Remember like the gospel album? And they were promoting it and he was going all over the place and, and they were doing like these pop-up shows and the gospel choir was singing with him everywhere. And then they eventually sued him and was like, where are our checks at? We ain't got no checks. Like we, we went and sang everywhere. We praised the Lord with you, but it was for a fee. Like it's work. We are, we are professionals. We hit our notes. We show up on time. Where's our checks? So they had to sue him for that. So Kanye doesn't have the best track record when it comes to taking care of, at the very least, gospel artists. Which I was like, you could stiff some other people. I was like, with people praising God? You gonna stiff the people praising God? Last but not least, there's two other things I could talk about. One of them is Herschel Walker, who's like running for Senate in Georgia. He's running against uh, Senator Raphael Warnock, who's also the senior pastor at Ebenezer Baptist Church, i.e. MLK used to preside over. So Herschel Walker is a former NFL player. He is also a black Republican who has been endorsed by Trump. He also has three women who have accused him of stalking. And they're not just coming out the woodwork now. Whenever women show up and say, this man has done these terrible things to me, people are like, well, why are you waiting till now? Why didn't you say something at the time? Well, they did. One of the women is his ex-wife. She's been speaking out. I'm reading this from the Griot as well. They said Walker's ex-wife, Cindy Grossman. She's been speaking out since 2008. She did an interview on CNN and she told them Walker held a gun to her temple and said, quote, he was going to blow my brains out. In 2005, Grossman had filed a protective order against Walker. Her sister submitted evidence that Walker had threatened his then wife and he'd also threatened her life, the sister and the sister's boyfriend. The new complaint that emerged is from a 2002 police report. The woman anonymously confirmed to CNN that Walker had threatened her. And according to the police report, she called the police. It was a prowler call. She said that someone was, quote, sneaking around outside her house. The woman said she'd had a confrontation with Walker the previous year, and she had just seen him before making the report, and he followed her to her home. Three women are accusing you of being a stalker? Your ex-wife and her sister, and now this other This other woman and with police reports from the time. So you did that shit. You did that shit. Nonetheless, despite the accusations, evangelist Franklin Graham. I don't know who that is. Who is Franklin Graham, y'all? I'm literally reading this from Wikipedia. He's an American evangelical evangelist (laughs) and missionary. He's currently president and CEO of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association and of Samaritan's Purse, an international Christian relief organization. Let's go find him on Twitter. He has 2.3 million followers on Twitter, and his bio it says the exact same thing as Wikipedia. Okay, he's a big-time evangelical minister. He is endorsing Herschel Walker even after these allegations of abuse and stalking. He says, quote, I've encouraged Christians across the country to run for political office and make a difference. And I'm thankful that people like Herschel are doing just that. He says Herschel is an outspoken Christian. He stands up for conservative values and he's got a lot of common sense. So I'm glad to see him step up and serve in this way. God bless him. I'm confused. Like how is a minister? One, I'm confused how you support someone who's been accused of violence against women and stalking on multiple occasions. But like, okay, you're a Christian. You want the advancement of, of Christian values to, you know, spread throughout the country. I've encouraged Christians across the country to run for political office. Reverend Warnock, the pastor of Martin Luther King's church. Does he not count as a Christian? You couldn't endorse him. To my knowledge, and please, Lord, don't let nothing come out. He doesn't have any charges of, of, of stalking or violence, rape, assault, none of that. Because I'm sure that shit would have came out during the election. He's been arrested a couple times. But I think, like, for protesting for, you know, the equal and civil rights of black people, nobody's holding that against him, or I'm not. But you want Christians to run for office, and, like, the Christian who, who is running for office 
who doesn't have assault charges or violent charges or, or any of that, that Christian is not the right Christian and they're both black, but you'd rather go with the Republican who's been accused of stalking and violence against women. Make it make sense. Make it make fucking sense. I was going to talk about little Nas X, I don't, I don't have anything more to add than my usual stance on him, which is I think he's a national treasure. He should be bubble wrapped and protected at all costs. He announced this week that he was pregnant, he had exclusive photos and people, and he is very excited about the birth of his upcoming album, Montero. He has been posting pictures of himself with a very realistic looking pregnant belly. I was like, the advancements in, in Photoshop and makeup prosthetics are amazing these days. Folks are flipping out left and right over little Nas X and his pregnant stomach. And apparently it's offensive to women and pregnant women and women who can't get pregnant and women who've had miscarriages. And, you know, what about the children? And I'm like, y'all don't give two shits for the cases of this argument about the children, about women, women who have miscarriages. Pregnant women, y'all don't give two shits. Y'all just don't like the fact that he's a black gay boy who does outrageous shit. And he does it intentionally. He's a professional troll. He takes all the crazy shit that people say about gay people, their sex lives, them going to hell, about them being parents. Like every possible thing that could be done to piss people off or to cause outrage. And ah, that's what he does. It's part of his marketing plan, y'all. Y'all just, y'all are enraged. Absolutely enraged. Little Nas X, I can't believe he's doing this. He's calling himself pregnant. His album comes out September. Yeah. It's going to go number one, too. Y'all are giving him amazing freaking buzz. And oddly enough, what he's going for isn't even all publicity is good publicity, which I don't agree with, but it's a philosophy. But the more people who hate Little Nas X rage against him, the more his supporters love him. They're fans of his music and or gay men and or a bunch of liberals who like watching quote and unquote conservative people or just straight up bigots because there's overlap. I don't think all conservatives are bigots, but people who don't like him go into this crazy frenzy over him and the people who support him love him all the more for just pissing people off. And in the way that he pisses people off and it's highly intelligent and highly smart and the people who get it are just enthralled by the idea of him. They're just like, we love you. Where have you been all this time? Oh, you were only 22. You just arrived. Stay a while. I love him. I think the pictures look weird as fuck. We're not used to seeing pregnant men. Most of the images that we see are of cishet men who obviously cannot get pregnant. But you know, trans men exist. And trans men can get pregnant. They have wombs. It's not a new world. It's a more openly discussed world. And and after, you know, pushing people to the margins at which point they tuck themselves away for safety purposes. They've now decided, fuck it, and you're going to see us. We done looked at y'all, now y'all going to look at us. And that's just where we are. And little Nas X, I don't think, is mocking trans men or women or anybody else. I think he's just doing like a really great fucking marketing plan that he knows people are going to talk about his album. It's going to get tons of publicity. And just like I said, it's pissing people off, which he loves to do. And it's like, you know, empowering or entertaining his followers. So, you know, it's a win for him. You know, I hope he keeps at it. I think it's hilarious to watch. Like, there have been these memes about, like, wait till Lil Boozy sees this shit. As predicted, Lil Boozy saw it and, like, went the fuck off. And the responses are all like, like, dude. Little Nas X lives rent-free in your mind. Like, just admit you want to fuck him. At this point, like, it's apparent to everyone but you. You want to fuck him, don't you? I'm just saying. So, that is the episode for this week. Is there anything else on my list that's interesting to talk about? No, some depressing stuff. There's been uh, new developments um, in the case of Elijah McCain. There's the young boy who was, who was killed by police in... So sad. I can't remember what city right now. Hold on. Colorado. Elijah McCain was in Colorado. And then Ahmaud Arbery, who was in Georgia. That was a young man who was was killed in Georgia. He was stalked by those crazy white folks who then shot him in the street. And uh, one of them recorded it on video. There's been been news advancements there. I have um, all the details in my notes. And 
Um, I'll save that for next week. Uh, neither of those deserve to be spoken about as an afterthought. So we'll get to that when we get back next Tuesday. So enjoy the three-day weekend. This is actually Labor Day as opposed to when I thought it was Labor Day last weekend. My bad. Um, so enjoy your three-day weekend. Get into good trouble. Light trifling trouble. I want you to have a good time. I don't want you to be all respectable all weekend long. But keep your shenanigans off the internet. That's all that I ask. Do your shenanigans as you please. We grown. We do our shenanigans in private off the internet. Everything ain't for everybody. Be grown, y'all. Be safe, y'all. And I'll talk to y'all next week. Okay. Bye. Now streaming exclusively on BET Plus, all the Queen's men. From Tyler Perry Studios and show creator Christian Keyes comes the hottest new original series on BET Plus. Based on Christian's best-selling novel, Ladies' Night, all the Queen's men stars Eva Marcel as Marilyn Madame DeVille, a ruthless male exotic dance club owner. Madam protects her empire at any cost, and betrayal or murder are not off the table. Heavy is the head that wears Madam's crown. Full of explosive drama and seductive showmanship. From Madam's Men, the full season of this steamy new series, All the Queen's Men, is now streaming only on BET+. Expect lots of skin, lots of sin, and plenty of plot twists all season long. Want BET Plus? It's the premium streaming service that lets you stream black culture anytime, anywhere, ad-free. Haven't subscribed yet? Visit BET.plus to sign up and learn more.